Hi, Scott. Hi, Pete. Hey, you're going to show us the SimCenter Sound Camera software today? Yeah, you bet. This Sound Camera software that you're looking at is actually what we use with our Sound Camera hardware, which is a source localization device where we can find an acoustic source and visually see where that's coming from, from whatever we're testing. So we have four displays here, as you can see. The upper left display is a live FFT. The upper right display shows the overall sound pressure level over time. And kind of the red line that's being traced comes from where I have this double cursor here. And I've selected a frequency range of approximately 1,000 hertz to almost 2,000 hertz. So the that's blue line is all the frequencies, and the red line is just the frequencies between the cursors. That's right. That also dictates what's being shown in this image right below here. So you okay. can see, yeah, so you can see if I move the cursor to this other tone that we have here, that there's also some noise coming from this phone. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't see tones and where they're coming from that are outside of that cursor range. So you can quickly differentiate between the phone and the person whistling with the cursor that you selected there, huh? Yeah, that's right. It also updated here this red line like we discussed earlier. Oh, so the phone doesn't contribute as much to the overall. That's correct. Can you change the limits on that frequency display? Yeah, I can. So by default, it uses an auto scale. I can switch that to a fixed scale. And if I look at this tone where the whistling is happening, it's kind of hovering anywhere between 95 or maybe as loud as even 100. But that will not show up until it hits that minimum that I've set here at 89. So every time this gentleman takes a breath, we dip below that 89 dB threshold, and there's no source localization at all being displayed until he begins to whistle and comes back into that range. And so we yeah, have a fixed can, range of 8 dB. You can see that in that overall, huh? Yeah. yeah. That, it's not a constant whistle. Right. And even if we move to where the phone tone is, it doesn't quite hit that 89 dB, so it doesn't show up here in the source localization. Interesting. Now we can go back to an auto scale, and I'll show you a couple of tricks here too. So by default in the software, we have an 8 dB range. That just got bigger where that sound source was. That's right, and it'll get even bigger here if I switch it to the whistle. So again, if I wanted to reduce that overall size of the source localization, I can play with this auto range and reduce that range from the highest source down to the lowest source. In this case, I'd use a 2 dB range. Zooms in a that little bit out. more, huh? Yeah, you can zero in a little bit more when you change that scale. I noticed frequency graph live graph goes up to 4575 hertz can you like change and zoom in yeah, zoom you, out there you absolutely can so the easiest way to zoom in is to look at where you have your double cursor and if you place your mouse arrow within that double cursor and scroll up with the scroll wheel on your mouse you can zoom in to that tighter range and if i zoom out from that, I can also just hover on the X scale here. And if I scroll up, that zooms in tighter. And if I scroll down, I could go and make that range as far as my bandwidth, which in this case is 12.8 kilohertz. Oh, neat. I couldn't help but notice also in the upper right, you got this averaging transient and stationary. What's that all about? Yeah, let me switch to a different project here where this gentleman starts to move his phone. And we'll talk about that a little bit. So I'll go back to where the tone is playing here on the phone. And we'll just highlight that within our double cursor. That's by far the, the highest peak. So we can see 
that red dot. And we've got this set to a stationary, or I'm sorry, we've got this set to a transient averaging right now, which means it's going to take more averages over time to calculate the source localization and this live FFT. If I switch so that. It's so updating quick. pretty fast, so it's tracking the phone pretty well, the dot. That's exactly right. But if I switch it to a stationary average, it's going to take more averages and more time to calculate that source localization. And so the red dot, once he starts moving this phone, won't necessarily stay with the phone. It will kind of lag because more time and more averages are being used to calculate where that sound is coming from. The overall level versus time smoothed out a bit. It did, because it took more averages to calculate that overall sound pressure level. And you can see he's almost painting a picture with that source localization based on the number of averages we're taking to update this image. Oh, so if I have a moving object, you know, this transient versus stationary could change how I see the image movement aligned with the sound location, huh? That's exactly right. So I'll switch it back to transient and it'll keep right up with it. You know, it's interesting watching this guy with his phone, but you got any other kind of data that you take around your house or? Yeah, well, you know, I like to drink coffee. So I actually did some source localization while I was making coffee on my tea kettle oh wow so you, yeah so you can see my tea kettle here and if i direct your eyes towards the upper right quadrant you can see there's three kind of large bumps in the sound pressure level with three different events and what that is is in this tea kettle as i'm boiling water there is a tone that lets me know when the water reaches temperature so one thing I haven't shown you yet is I can make a double cursor here and limit this playback. And then I oh. will, and then I'll actually loop the playback here with this check mark turned on. And so now it's just going to play over and over within this cursor range. I have it at zero to 3.35. It's just going to loop that playback. Yeah. And with this and tone, I, oh, I can see I, that the sound location changes when you're in the tone versus not in the tone, but it goes by pretty fast there. Yeah, so we'll use a couple of our, our tricks here. First, we'll reduce that range to make sure we get a good red dot. So I'm going to take this frequency range and just go where that tone is, because that's really all I care about. And you can see that the red dot, every time that tone goes off, shows me where the speaker is on my tea kettle to let me know when things are done. And Pete, I can even capture that moment by hitting this reference button, and that'll actually populate this fourth quadrant we haven't talked about yet with a snapshot in time. So I'm gonna, oops. So that's where the water's boiling. And then when that event happens, Oh, I see. You captured with, with the alarm or the temperature notification going off, and it's in that corner. Okay. That's but, right. Uh, so we captured a static image. That's what the reference is. But the yep. live image is still going. So I can kind of, I don't have to remember what it looked like. I can see them side by side this way. That's right. And so even if I made a change, and let's say we move the speaker in this tea kettle, I could compare what it looked like here in this image with an updated test object. That's pretty cool. And I see you can also change your scale to octaves or something. Yeah. So if you do more work in octave or if the narrow band isn't necessarily what you're interested in localizing, I can just click this button here and the live FFT changes to the third octave band and I can highlight these octaves to see my source localization update. Oh, okay, and then you can go back to linear whenever you want, huh? Yeah. What does a temperature alarm on a fancy coffee maker like yours sound like? Yeah, I can even play that for you. 
So if I click this listening button, you'll actually hear these tones. So I'm gonna zoom back in on those and I'll click listening. And when I click this, I'll be able to listen to any microphone from that sound camera array. In this case, I'm just gonna listen to microphone one. So I'll click listening. And you can hear those, those beats. And you can even hear them as I loop through the playback. That's cool, but uh, it's a lot for my ears. You can turn the listening off now, but that's a neat feature. Yeah, so there, I just turned it off for you. All right. So your measurements that you uh, have done are all in the lower right there, and you can switch between them, or this is what the live view would look like. To go to the live view, normally you'd hit that double arrow in the upper left if there yep. was a array hooked up. Yeah, Great. so if I had the array hooked up, I would just hit this icon where it says switch to preview mode, but the entire interface would be exactly the same as everything that we've talked about today. That's really neat. Thank you very much for the tour of the sound camera software, Scott. Yeah, anytime, Pete. All right.